Hello friends, welcome to Gardening with Creekside. I am Jenny and welcome to the weekly nursery tour. This is our first nursery tour in June. So again, this is just a, a video to show you what is growing, blooming, and thriving here at Creekside Nursery in Dallas, North Carolina, zone 7B. It's just really informal. Jerry and I are just gonna walk through the nursery and see what is going on. If you are close by, we would love for you to come see us. If you're not close by, this is an inspiration for you to get out to your, your own local um, garden center and see what they have available for you because this is a great time to get out and be planting. Even in North Carolina, it is not too late to go ahead and start planting different, whether it's shrubs or perennials or annuals. It's a great time to still planting. We are planting like crazy. One thing that's right here behind me is some gorgeous Incredible hydrangeas. Hydrangea season is about to be upon us here in North Carolina. We have got things that are just opening up and are gorgeous. Now, I love Incredible hydrangeas because these are from Proven Winners. This is the improved version of an Annabelle. So let me show you the tag. I know how much y'all love the tags. So um, Incredibles do love the sun. So sun to park shade, they're gonna be in zones three to eight, four to five feet tall and wide. These are wonderful because Annabelle's are just a classic hydrangea. These guys are an improved Annabelle because they have sturdier stems. Annabelle's are notorious for having weak stems. And so when they have those big, huge, massive blooms on them, Last night we got an inch of rain. If these were Annabelle's, the, all the stems would be flopped over. You can see that they're nice and upright. Of course, they're not in full, full bloom yet, but they're still nice and tall and erect. Um, so that's the great thing about Incredibles is that they don't have floppy um, stems. I do want to, oh, right here we go. These are the Invincible Rubies. Again, let me show you the tag. And again, if this is a Proven Winners plant that I'm showing you, feel free to go to provenwinners.com, stick the name in, and they will give you everything you've ever wanted to know about the plant. Now, both Incredible and Ruby are color specific. That means that they will always be the same color. The, this, your soil pH does not affect the color of the bloom. This is a fantastic one. It is a re-blooming um, hydrangea. Again, sun to part shade, zones three to eight. A little bit smaller than the Incredible, three to four feet tall and wide. And it will bloom um, spring through fall. They make great, um, of course, cut flowers, bring, make a base, bring them inside, and they do fantastically well. Um, also right here, butterfly bushes are starting to bloom. If you are looking to attract pollinators to your garden, then you just can't go wrong with some butterfly bushes. Really, we have two main series here at the nursery that we carry, um, both from Proven Winners. This is the Pugster series, and they come in different colors. Pugsters are fantastic because um, they're a two by two, so they're nice and petite. They do great in small areas of landscapes, um, near sidewalks. They do great in a container. Petite size, but huge full bloom. I mean, look at this. Nice, fat, fat blooms. This particular one is amethyst. So this is the color of amethyst. There's blue, there's pink, uh, there's, there's, a, there's a couple of different colors, but fantastic. Butterflies go nuts over these things. Then we go into the Miss series. The Miss series is going to be a larger plant. This is Miss Violet, obviously, a gorgeous deep purple, huge blooms on it. This is gonna be in that four to five foot range. Um, so there is Miss Violet. Next door is Miss Molly, which is gonna be what I consider like a raspberry color. Um, just gorgeous. I've had Miss Molly for years and years and years. She is just a reliable, the whole Miss series is just a fantastic, reliable bloomer throughout the whole entire season. Now, butterfly bushes, what do you need to grow a butterfly bush? You need tons of sun, lots and lots of sun at a minimum, like six hours of sun. Lots of sun, 
They do not like to have wet feet. So if you've got a kind of a wet, soggy spot, don't put a butterfly bush in there. They like it dry. They love to be neglected. They don't like to have compost added to their hole. Like the worst soil you can imagine, stick them in there and they'll love it. So that's one reason why we love the butterfly bushes. Again, more hydrangeas, depending on um, the variety, a lot of the macrophylia, the um, serratas are starting to bloom. The panicles have not really started to bloom yet. They're a little bit later because those are all going to bloom on new growth. So they haven't really started blooming yet. Um, so those will come later on in the summer. That's what all of these are right here, just various panicles. Um, I do want to show you an update on the water trough. Um, I think we've been here <clears throat> before I know I posted some social media pictures when I first planted it. It is filling in just fantastically well. Again, typically I do coleus and petunias in here. This year I wanted to do it completely different. Um, a lot of foliage with just a little bit of flowers. So again, we got an inch of rain last night, so the gold dust is a little uh, beat down by the rain. But we have three Prince Tuts in the back. Prince Tut will get easily probably three to four feet tall by the end of the season. So we have three Prince Tuts. Then this beautiful coleus is Pineapple Brandy. Pineapple Brandy is um, new this year. It is just an amazing plant. Does sun or shade will get, again, will get nice and huge by the end of the season. Then we have these gorgeous caladiums. These were some of the caladiums that Classic Caladiums sent us. This is clowning around. So we have three clumps of the clowning around. I mean, just gorgeous. I love with the red of the clowning around paired with the pineapple brandy because pineapple brandy has red veining and red stems. So that all works well together. And then as the flowers and the spillers, this is gold dust. Gold dust is a great annual from Proven Winners. Nice, petite little blooms. And it will trail over, as you can see, but it's not going to be like a vigorous trailer like, say, a, a Vista Supertunia. So again, lots of color. Um, I, obviously, it's cloudy this morning, so there's not any sun here. But I had had somebody ask me, because when I took a picture and put it on social media, it was in the shade, and so they were very confused. This is an interesting spot to plant because the sun comes up right behind Jerry, and this is in full, full sun till about one or two in the afternoon before it goes behind the barn, and then it's in complete and total shade for the rest of the afternoon. So this is still considered a full sun container because it gets that five to six hours of good sun. But yes, then it's in the shade for the afternoon. So if you've got an area like this, you can go, um, and that's what's so great about like the, um, the coleus because it can do sun or shade. So it's very versatile. So but if you've got an area, you've got to look at, you know, what's your total number of hours and is it morning sun or afternoon sun? So that way it gives you a little bit of, of playroom, but all these plants are considered full sun and they are clearly doing great. In the water trough, we do not have, we did not drill um, holes in the bottom. About an inch above the bottom in the very back is a drain hole. So we just use that. So if it ever gets too much water in there, it'll just overflow out of that drain hole. But it's great because it's, it's almost like a little bit of a self-watering container. We don't, um, Maybe sometimes during the week when the nursery's not open, I'm out over here watering it every day. So if I get it good and watered in once, you know, once a week, then it does fantastic. We still have great um, selection of tropicals left. So tropical hibiscus, the mandevilla, those are all available. Those are going to be annuals because they are tropicals. They won't survive our winter. The pot is coming along great. I promise I'm going to get this video. <laughs> We still have to do the other white pot. I promise we will get it videoed and put up so that y'all can understand exactly how we put this together. Um, again, got an inch of rain last night. It's a little beat down, but clearly it is loving life wonderfully. Um, we still have tons of annual color, tons of petunias um, left, petunias and super bells. Um, we still have coffee cups. We have the sun credible sunflowers. I do see something blooming down here that I want to show you. This is Macho Morado. Again, this is another new one from Proven Winners this year. Um, we trialed this last year in our trial garden and it did great. 
This is one of those few plants that really thrives in the south. They have to have the heat and humidity at night. So if you don't have, maybe you have cool nights, you're still going to grow this plant, but maybe you're not going to see as many flowers on it. Um, this is a plant that really needs a hot, humid nights to produce those flowers. So for us, that's like a win-win because very few plants have those kind of requirements. Um, this will get 18 to 32 inches tall. It is hardy in zones 9A to 12B. I'll tell you this, we're a 7B, mine came back. So at the end of the season, when we had a frost, all we did was cut it to the ground. It's coming back, it's big, it's beautiful. Just got, I thought I'd throw that out there for you. Um, so those are doing great. These are still the same ones, they nice and green. Um, salvias are doing great. If you're looking to bring in pollinators, any of the salvias, whether they are annual salvias or perennial salvias, will be wonderful. This is playing the blues, just gorgeous crystal, not crystal blue, kind of a deep blue purple. And I love the foliage. It's a little bit more of a lighter silvery green than say like the Rockin' series. Um, but the pollinators love that. Uh, in fact, there's over here, <laughs> These are the rockin' series over here, and there's, um, there's honeybees and there's bumblebees. Um, probably there's not any hummingbirds right now because we're so close, but the, all the pollinators, the hummingbirds, love those plants. Caladiums. Guys, I've said it before and I'm going to say it again. If you do not have caladiums in your garden, garden, you are missing out. These are some of the absolute lowest maintenance highest performer plants you can possibly imagine. If you are, you don't have time to be out there babying and, you know, nitpicking, but you want to have some nice filler and some color, caladiums. Caladiums are the way to go. All of these caladiums that we have here at the nursery are sun or shade, so extremely versatile. Jerry is showing you White Wonder right now. White Wonder is the Caladium of the year. It is mostly white with that green edging, and then it'll have that pink veining in it. I have these in hanging baskets. I have them in the ground, and I'm going to put them in my hay racks in the shade garden. <clears throat> some of them are gonna be full, full sun. Some of them are gonna be a little bit of morning sun, and some are filtered sun. So they're very, very versatile. Then he's showing you, I believe, that is Fast Flash, um, which is mostly a red. Then we have Scarlet Flame, which has more of a little bit of a pink hue to it. So those are here. And then there is Scarlet. No, we did Scarlet Flame, Fast Flash, and Heart's Delight. There's Heart's Delight is back over here, a little bit pinkier on that side. Herbs, we've got herbs. Um, it's not too late to put your herbs in your garden. If you've got sunny areas that, again, hot and dry, you might really want to consider echinacea. Echinacea are a fantastic perennial. This is sombrero orange. We really love the sombrero series. Some echinaceas, honestly, are better than others. Just Let's just be honest about it. The sombrero series is wonderful. We have... <laughs> Camera work is really fun. You think, oh, just point the camera and it'll automatically focus. Yeah, sometimes yes, sometimes no. Um, so we have the Sombrero series. This is the orange. We have it in salsa red. And then we also have it in yellow. So very vibrant colors. They um, are just fantastic bloomers. They will naturally, this is the time of year where they're gonna start to bloom. Um, so those are fantastic. In fact, look over here at the, um, the grill. We've been here before. Give you a little update on the grill. So this is the sombrero yellow. So you can see like this plant right here is the sombrero yellow. This plant is the Lakota fire. So Lakota fire is fun because it'll have various shades of reds and pinks and oranges all on the same plant. So that is a fun one mixed in with the Superbells, the Bidens, and then the Lantana. Lantana is starting to um, bloom and do fantastic. Give you an update over here on the wheelbarrow. Now, again, remember, <laughs> 
These cannas are trials that Classic Caladium sent us. This is Cleopatra. And Cleopatra has, even if she never bloomed, she would be absolutely stunning just from her foliage. Just gorgeous. You can see just the absolute um, contrast and difference. You know, here you have a predominantly green leaf with just a couple of stripes of the, the burgundy. Then you have this leaf, which is like a half and half. It looks like this leaf is going to be almost a solid. So even on the same plant, you're going to have lots of variation in the color. Now, Cleopatra will do gorgeous, bright yellow blooms with a little bit of red in them. Hence, this is why I put the high noon underneath it. Um, and so that will give the yellow will all play together. Again, with this wheelbarrow, there are no official holes drilled in here. It is an old rusty wheelbarrow, so it does leak some. But again, this does not get hit by irrigation. So we can water this really good about once a week. And it kind of acts a little bit as a self-watering container. Clearly, they're doing great. Um, so we will obviously keep you updated on that progress. Now, moving on over. So here you can see Ruby in the landscape. So Invincible Ruby that we showed you just a minute ago, this is her in the landscape. I planted this one um, last year and it was kind of late um, and the soil right here is horrible. I mean, just awful. So last year she struggled a little bit. Um, this year she's doing better. So there's a, a saying in the gardening horticultural world, um, sleep, creep, leap. So the first year it sleeps she definitely slept last year. It's just like keep her alive and that's if you do that you're good. Then creep. So she's creeping, right? So she's slowly coming back and then hopefully next year she will leap. With your hydrangeas, what you want to do as far as maintenance on them, in the fall I put some good compost just around the base of her. Um, not too close on her main stems and then we um, rose toned her. So rose toned fertilizer for your hydrangeas. I know it sounds a little awkward but it actually works really well. Um, everything in here is just very happy and lush from the rain last night. I do want to show you this. This is, we're talking about hydrangeas coming into bloom. This is zebra hydrangea. I have one of these in the garden um, outside our kitchen window that I will be planting up here coming that whole garden pretty soon. My zebra is absolutely gorgeous. This one is coming into her own as well. It's called zebra because the stems are nearly black. I mean, they're pretty much black. And then you have these beautiful white blooms on it. So hence, it is a zebra. This is from Garden Debut. It is, I'm trying to find my zones here. Um, then tell me my zones. It is a macrophylia, partial shade, four feet tall, three feet wide. Um, with the macrophylias, like mine gets morning sun and then it's in this shade for the afternoon. So zebra hydrangea is fantastic. This is a Miss Molly. We talked about Miss Molly over shrub lot. Miss Molly here, she has been in this pot for several years and is doing quite well. Um, moving on, here we have a caladium in a pot. So you can just see different ideas of how to put a caladiums in a pot next to some, um, you know, hostas and ferns doing really well. We do have still a good selection of hostas available. Yesterday, our sweet friend Kata from uh, Walter's Gardens came and spent, gosh, we spent like three hours together and we planned our entire perennial program for next year. And we are so excited about um, some of the fantastic plants that we're going to be growing for you for next year. So that's going to be fun. So stay tuned in the coming, in the coming times for that. Um, the hydrangeas, again, this is Penny Mac. Penny Mac is a great, it was bred in Georgia, developed in Georgia. It's a great macrophylia. These are going to be um, pH dependent. So depending on your soil pH will depend on the color of your blooms, but just that classic, massive, you know, mop head hydrangea is doing quite well. If you have shade and you're looking for some color, you can have color in the shade with your annuals. So this is a great table. So this table and then the table that's behind 
um, us. These are all shade annuals. So don't think just because you have shade, you can't have big pops of color. That's not true. So the majority of this table is the Rakapuko series, double in patience. Fantastic, gorgeous, and beautiful. One last thing that I wanna show you before we go, we're gonna wrap it up here, is the um, drinking gourd. It is doing great. Look at that beautiful thing. So don't ever give up on your hostas. This is a, like a four-year-old plant. It's doing wonderful. As always, thank you so much for gardening with Creekside. Y'all have a fantastic day. We'll see you in the next video. Bye, friends.